Now, joining us on stage um, is Gong.io, which I kind of hope is an artificially intelligent symbol. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. That's a, there's your microphone, there's your timer. You have five minutes. Go for it. Let's go. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Udi Lettergore. I'm the VP Marketing of Gong.io. Um, and today I want to tell you how we use AI to help salespeople have better sales conversation. So back in March 2017, the LinkedIn re sales readiness team approached us. They said, we have a problem. We have our top performers, about 5%. We have our middle of the pack, and we have our 5% five perform of uh, poor performers. Yet even our top performers themselves don't know to explain what they're doing differently, why they are selling more. And of course, we want to shift everyone towards the top performers. We want to sell more instead of hiring more people, right? And this, of course, has to do with a much bigger problem that anyone who's ever used the CRM system can attest to. You have a lot of sales conversations, thousands at an organization like LinkedIn going on every week by email, by phone, by video conference, face-to-face, -face, mobile phones, texting, and all of them go into the black hole otherwise known as your CRM system. And then from there, it's anyone's guess as to why a deal was won and why a deal was lost. There are three inherent problems to your CRM system, any CRM system. One, the information there is partial. In the case of sales, you'd be lucky if your top salesperson person took the time to type 30 words to summarize a one-hour call. You know how many words are in a one-hour call? About 6,000. Okay, that's number one. Number two, it's outdated. If you wanted to intervene in that call or in that deal before it goes south, good luck, because by the time someone updated the information, the deal has already been won or lost. Three, the information is subjective. When was the last time you saw a salesperson write down, I could have handled this situation better? Or the customer said he didn't like the way I was handling the deal. You don't see that show up in your CRM, okay? So these are the three problems that we solve. And this is what we came to a few weeks later to LinkedIn. We took a few hundred of their call recordings, video recordings, phone recordings, and we showed them a chart like this and many others that followed. And this showed them the exact difference of what their top salespeople were doing that was different to the rest of the salespeople. In this case, we're looking at topics or talk tracks that the salespeople are using in their sales conversations. So we showed them the exact topics that the top performers were spending time on, in what order, for how long, how they were distributing their questions, and what the poor performers were doing. And it turned out there were dramatically different patterns to the sales calls that won deals compared to the sales calls that lost deals. Now, this was done unsupervised, so our AI, or rather the humans that we looked at it, we didn't understand what the topics were. We just showed this to LinkedIn, and they slapped their forehead and said, this makes total sense. It turns out that many of the poor performers were using last year's pitch. They either had not attended or not paid attention to some of the sales training. They were talking about features that were specifically told them not to talk about because they were not competitive anymore. And the top performers were doing the exact opposite. They were spending the right time on the right features and selling a lot more. This, of course, allowed LinkedIn to retrain a lot of the people and move sales upward. This is the broader solution that we're offering. We're taking all of those sales conversations, whether they're text-based, voice-based, video-based, put into your CRM, taking away all the guesswork, okay? No manual typing. We're now giving you complete versus partial information. We're giving you objective versus subjective information. We're giving you access to that information in real time versus outdated. Here's another chart that we showed LinkedIn that now helps them every day when they do sales coaching for their teams. We're showing them the actual reps on the team and showing them the talk time per call. So is Mary spending 63% of the time talking versus John that's spending 83% of his time talking? Well, it turns out that Mary is selling us a lot more. So now our feature called Whisper can tell John, better look at what Mary is doing because she's talking 20% less than you and she's selling a lot more. You might want to try that on your next call or look, Mary was talking about this feature and you didn't even mention it. You might want to try that because she's hitting quota and you're not. So here's a little bit more about how the magic works. We take a, a call, an average sale call could be like an hour long. We break it down into speaker separation. We use voice print, so even if they're talking to the same mic, we know, or on the same line, we know how to separate them very easily. So we know who was talking when and what about. We know what they were talking about, the exact topics in the sense that they appear in a sales conversation. So we've acquired deep domain knowledge in the last three years on what a sales conversation looks like. 
We know exactly what was said, so you can track things like your competitors being mentioned. Uh, is your salesperson offering that th three-year deal that you asked them to offer, etc. We know what's showing up on the screen, so we now know what the exact effect of switching your video camera on a Zoom call has versus just showing a live product demo. Uh, here's a spoiler tip. If you turn on your camera, you have a much uh, better chance of closing that deal. And we're happy to announce here that in the next month's launch of Beat, we're now doing the same thing for emails. This is thanks to a company we acquired a few months ago called Ondigo, which had the same capabilities we've had for a while on voice and video, on emails and text and other uh, written communications. So this will be part of next month launch. In conclusion, the three main areas where we help are sales execution. We're helping sales team execute better, close more deals. We have written case studies uh, on record to show this. Skill development, we're helping the millennial workforce get the training and the coaching that they so aspire to get from employers and for the employers to keep them happy. And finally, market insights. So if you're in product or, or a chief executive officer or a marketing or sales officer, you know what the voice of your customer is, what they're saying about you and your competitors, and are your field sales really delivering the message that you want. Today we're the number one conversation, conversation intelligence platform. Uh, this is the G2 crowd showing us at the top leader quadrant. We have tens of thousands of users at 300 uh, enterprises, mid-market and SMBs using Gong every day and using RAI to help salespeople have better sales conversations. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so apart from the best use of uh, Microsoft clip art and stock photography, uh, Sarah, what's your question? <laughs> Yeah, so you had pointed to a couple of metrics that I assume you use to demonstrate ROI to customers, including increased conversion. But, but how do you establish causality? Like, how do you convince a sales leader that Gong is the reason that they're converting more customers? Great question. So I, as a marketer, have a similar difficult problem in marketing attribution, right? Anyone who's been in marketing knows that solving market attribution is a nightmare. So indeed, um, we show a lot of correlation. Some of the causality is deduced from the situation before and after using Gong. So we talk to sales organization using Gong. Uh, they sh some of them share with us the metrics. These are our average sales cycle. This is our average uh, deal size, this is our average win rate, and this is how the salespeople are distributed amongst top, medium, and bottom performers. And then they'll use Gong for, say, six months, and then we'll look at those metrics again. And we have many sales uh, leaders saying that they attribute a large, if not the entire improvement, to the use of Gong in their organization. It totally changes the culture of the sales organization from a siloed organization where it's highly competitive but no one's sharing information or collaborating. Suddenly, everyone knows that all of their calls, all of their emails are, are being monitored but in a positive way that they can self-coach themselves, they can uh, listen in silently on calls of anyone on their team that their manager approved that they can get access to. So they already learn on day one. We, we know that we cut the onboarding time in half just by um, sales team using the Gong libraries to listen to all the best plays and the worst plays that their uh, employer has accumulated over several years versus the traditional way of doing this where a salesperson would come in and for weeks or months shadow live calls. So that's just a small uh, way to show the ROI, which is really immediate within weeks. Ben, what's the question? So full disclosure, I have a small personal investment in Chorus, which is a competitor. People and make just, mistakes. Yeah, there's uh, <laughs> quite a few people in the space. So maybe talk a bit about everybody's goal that I've seen so far is real time, but in reality what I have seen is that it's batch, it's after the fact. Um, do you see a model for you or for anybody else today that actually gets you to the point of being the coach in the ear? That's a, that's a great question and something we've been toying with, uh, as have some of the other competitors in the space. As it is right now, about 90% of our customers are in B2B tech, and from what we've discovered with them, they, their salespeople, who are usually highly paid, highly skilled, and highly experienced people, would find um, real-time coaching during the call very distracting. Okay, these are not uh, people answering a, a service line, I lost my credit card, and in that case, they might need canned answers. That's not our typical customer today. We're working with, with a much more experienced salespeople who wanna get through the call, and then after the fact, could be five minutes after, it could be an hour later, look at the stats and analytics and see what they could do better to save this specific deal and what, the, what could they do better to work on their skills. There are a few real-time features that we're still playing with in the lab and uh, we might gradually test them uh, in the field, but that's not something we've been seeing at all, any market pool really, uh, not in the market that we're working with right now. Awesome, Arif? Uh, two questions, one tactical, one more strategic. First is, um, do you support languages outside of English? 
And then second, um, are you sales specific or do you have plans to go outside the domain of sales? Two great roadmap questions. So uh, on languages, um, we've estimated the amount of effort that will take us is a few months of work to support a whole library of at least European and other Western languages. Uh, we just haven't seen enough market pull, and like many big investments like this, the, f the, the moment we get a large global customer who will want this, he will probably uh, shift our priorities. So we have just started tapping into the English-speaking market, where, as I showed you, like 300 customers. There's several more thousands out there before we have to go look in other markets, so that's number one. As for the sales domain, yes, today we're very, very focused on sales. Uh, we have a deep domain knowledge and understanding what a sales conversation is. Many of our executive teams have ran uh, sales or marketing teams and know what this means. We are getting a lot of market pull from HR and recruiting and VCs and uh, academia for many, many different use cases for the technology to understand what uh, conversation patterns work better than others, I'm sure we'll be uh, branching out. Right now, we're seeing um, already that in many sales organizations where we rolled out, the service organization also buys Gong. Even though we didn't pitch it to them, we didn't intend it, we didn't build a product for them, the entire language around the product is about sales. But as soon as support customer success see this, they want it because they immediately understand the value of, under of giving a better buyer experience and understanding what works and what doesn't. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.